Hey, welcome everybody. This episode we're going to talk about arrays and we're actually going to be creating a new project. So we're going to create arrays to keep track of basically a list of food and ultimately we will include the price of the food and this will allow us to basically keep track of, imagine this being a receipt, you can keep track of all the foods you've bought and the cost for those foods. You could then, you know, sum up that value and get your total cost if you wished, or do various other things. So, to get started, we're going to first create a new project. First, I wanted to say thank you to our sponsor, Visual Assist. This is a Visual Studio plugin that will enhance your C++ development experience. This will add many features to Visual Studio to help you write code and refactor as needed. You can get started with a free trial. I will drop a link down below. Definitely use that link if you want to support this channel. Now let's get started. We are going to go into our editor and create a new project. So file, new, console application, and okay. This will create a file1.cpp inside of project2 in our case. What we can do is save this and I'm just going to call this foods. Hit save. That changed the file name, but it doesn't actually change the project. So that will happen when you try to run. It'll ask you to save the project, which I'll also call this foods. So a third save will pop up and basically we're going to name the foods header file and the foods project. So I just named them all the same thing. And as we did with the previous example, I'm just going to start from scratch with an int main and a return zero and then a system pause. So. so we will go ahead and include the basic stuff, which will be IO stream in this case. Include IO stream and include string. And we'll say using namespace STD, which we talked about in episode three, I believe. So to create an array, basically what you do is you define what type of data you want to store. So we can say string foods and then square brackets. Here we define how many foods we want to store. Let's go with three. We'll use a semicolon. And we can start adding foods to this array. An array you can think of just as a list or a bucket. And I'm also going to zoom in just a little bit here so we can see better. Or imagine you're going shopping and you have a literal basket with three spots for food. That is essentially what we are building now. This is statically sized, meaning we type the size in hard-coded here and it's going to stay that size the entire time similar to how variables are statically typed so this is always going to be a string array of size three we can add three food elements here by saying foods and then in square brackets using a zero and assigning it a value. It starts with zero, so it's gonna be zero, one, and two to talk about the three different food elements. Element is just a word often used to describe an item inside of an array. Since this is a string array, we will put the quotes and then put some food here, grapes. That is how you define the first food element. We will do the same thing for foods of one, and we will say carrots. And then lastly, foods of two. And what food do we want to use? Oh, I don't know. Lemons. So this number passed in the square brackets is known as the index. So this is index zero, index one, and index two. The three up here is not an index, rather it's the size. So when you define the array, you're passing in the size. When you're using the array, you're passing in an index. So foods of zero, you might hear it said, or you might just hear index zero in the foods array is assigned the value grapes. How do we actually print these values? Well, you can say C out and then just use foods passing in an index such as one. And this should output carrots. So we run this and we get carrots. Great job. You can also change the value of any of these indexes foods one we will assign it chocolate and now when we run we should get the output chocolate 
So basically we assigned it carrots, but then we replaced that with chocolate. Now I'm gonna talk about an alternative way to assign values to the array, and that is with the initialization. If you're using the terminal, you might need to compile with C++11. For us, the play button will work just fine, but basically if you wanted to say, hey, we want grapes, carrots, and lemons, without having to go through and choose each index, what you can do is you can assign these values up front. So we can actually just pass these in as strings. So we'll say grapes, carrots, and lemons separated by commas. This will allow us to remove these three lines and save a lot of space. Everything should work the same way. So we replace foods one with chocolate. Let's just get rid of that line to make sure this is working. So foods of one should still be carrots. And you see we get carrots. Now this is interesting because it allows us to remove the size over here. The important thing to realize though is that it is still statically sized. It's still size three. It just is able to infer that from the line of code we have here. So now when we run, it still should work exactly the same way. Perfect. Now we've talked about printing. What happens if we do something like foods of 10? Let's see what happens. We run this, we get nothing. This is very dangerous because we're reading data outside of the bounds of the array. Anytime we go out of the bounds of the array, bounds meaning the start and the end in memory, the behavior is unpredictable. We can't say for sure what's going to happen, and this is especially so when we are assigning data. So if we tried to assign to foods of 10, we'll say foods 10 and assign it a value test. This is going to just not work. And you can see that it actually just closed on its own. So the program just crashed. What if we wanted to print every element inside of this array? What we can do is, instead of saying see out foods of 10, we can actually create a loop to print every single element. So we will say for int i is zero, i is less than three, which is the size of the array, and then i plus plus. Since i is starting at zero, it's going to go zero, one, and two, and then i being less than three is going to be false and it'll stop running. So we don't risk reaching index three because that is outside the bounds of the array. Then inside of the loop, we can output. So we'll say C out foods. And instead of passing in zero, one or two, we can actually use I. So that's going to change each iteration, grabbing a new element. And then we will just say end line. So this should do the trick running this. We get grapes, carrots, lemons. Now real quick, I know this video is going kind of long. I want to talk about another array type. This is an array coming from the standard library. And the way it's going to be set up, instead of saying string foods with the square brackets, you will say array. And inside of these carrots, you will say what type of the array it is, in this case string, and the size of the array, in this case three and then you will just give it a name, so no square brackets. This should work the same way, so we can run this. We're getting an error, and that is actually because we did not include the appropriate include, which is array. Now it runs and it works the same way. This has a magical function attached to it that you can invoke, so inside of our for loop we can say i less than three, Instead of saying less than three, we can actually say foods.size. So this is a function that is attached to it. This is part of object-oriented programming, and it's called a method. So a function that is attached to an object is called a method. So the size method will automatically get that value three for us, which allows us to prevent errors or issues running the, our code if we ended up changing the size and forgetting to change all of our loops. It dynamically will get the size for us. So let's run this and you can see it works the same way. And there's actually another loop structure I wanted to teach you guys and that is going to replace this for loop altogether. You would say for, so it's still using the for keyword, but the syntax is a bit different where you will say auto food colon foods. So the auto food is going to be a variable 
that will reference whatever food we are on for that iteration. The auto is the type and it can be figured out just by analyzing the array here. So it's obviously going to be a string, but you can also hard code string as well. So that'll work as well. And then in here, we can say C out food end line. This should do the trick. And there you go. So that's two different looping techniques that you should be familiar with when it comes to working with arrays. And just to show you that auto should work as well. When you use auto, food is still going to be typed to a string statically. So we, it's not like it's just some dynamic type, but it just figures that out for us. There you go. These two different array types, they both work. I would probably prefer the second one, which is more modern and has different methods that make things easier for us. But the key thing to know here is that these are both statically sized. You determine the size of these arrays at compile time. If you want an array that can grow and shrink, that concept, a dynamic array, without having to manually worry about memory management, then you can use an existing type known as a vector. So a vector is what we're going to be talking about in the next video. And this is going to make the entire array experience very awesome. You can make a lot of cool applications with vectors. So stay tuned for that and be sure to subscribe.